Honorable Chief Guest, Guests of Honor, Members of the Dais, Honorable Members in the Audience, Teachers of the School, and my dear children. I am delighted to be here this morning to be a part of this interesting program where a book has been released in English and there was some discussion on issues of languages and the language policy of the Muslims. But uh, I will not speak much about that. Uh, Madam, communication is one of the greatest gift that humankind has received. It distinguishes us from animals. Animals also do have a rudimentary, uh, rudimentary uh, form of communication. But the human communication is far advanced. Today, we can communicate over time and over space. What was written 500 years ago or what was told 500 years ago is available to us. And what we do today will be available until eternity. So over time we can communicate. Over space we can communicate. What we say at one place can be heard and understood thousands of miles away at the same time instantly or after being recorded. So communication is the greatest ability that humankind has been given or has acquired. And one of the greatest uh, industrialists, Henry Ford said, that I will pay more for the ability to communicate better than for other any other ability under the sun. Because if you cannot transfer the meaning that is there in your mind to another person, then you cannot expect cooperation, collaboration, obedience, or moving forward together. So communication is very important. And communication has grown over a period of time from gestures to words to written word. And there have been various scripts down the ages. We have the Egyptian heliographs. We have the different languages that are there. And uh, coming to the issue of uh, languages, or before that, let me talk to you about written communication and oral communication. Written communication is something which stands over time. But now with the modern recording devices, oral communication can also be recorded and be available for all times to come. But personal communication, oral personal communication is very important. And in this there are three things which are very important. It is the dance, the music, and the sound when we communicate. What is the dance of communication? It is the body language, the gestures, the posture, the facial expressions. These are very important in communication. Then what is music? Music is the tone, the tenor, the pronunciation, and how we deliver the words. That's the music. And what is the song? The song are the words, the vocabulary that we use. Do we mean red? Do we mean scarlet? Do we mean pink? Do we mean tomato red? It's very important that we use the right word in order to communicate what we wish to communicate. But you will be very surprised to know that about 85% of oral communication 
is successful through the dance. The posture, gestures, facial expressions, these are very important to communication. Maybe another 10% is through music. The way we speak, the way we show surprise, the way we, the way we show sorrow, the way we enunciate the words, the tone and the tenor, these are important. And finally, up to 5% depends on the words that we have spoken. So the impressions made are mainly due to the dance and the uh, music. But that doesn't mean that the song is not important. One has to have a very good vocabulary in order to express oneself in a perfectly uh, understandable way. Now, in the communication coming to the languages, it's an issue that what are the languages one should learn. Um, you see, the experts, the educational experts have come to the conclusion that education is best given in the mother tongue. I say mother tongue, not Urdu, not Telugu, not Malayalam, not Bengali. Whatever is one's mother tongue, that is the best medium of communication for education. Having said that, now it depends what should be the other language that one should learn. I guess that would depend on our belief. We are all believers in Islam. And Allah has spoken to us. Allah has spoken to us. The word of Allah is the Quran. Don't you think as Muslims we should be able to understand what Allah has said? If we are not understanding that, then we are not worth the name of being called Muslims. Because unless we understand, follow and practice what Allah has said, we are not Muslims. You see this five essential things, the Iman, the Roza, the Namaz, the Zakat, they are called as pillars of the Islam. But I say they are the pillars of the portico of the building of Islam. Only you have to enter the big house, the big mansion, the big palace that is Islam. And that can happen only through reading the Quran. And Quran is the fountainhead of knowledge. After the Quran has been brought to us through our Prophet and read and followed, by many of the intellectuals, they have developed all kinds of knowledge. Because as Quran is the word of Allah, the existence of the universe is the work of Allah. We must study the work of Allah. From astronomy to zoology, we can choose anything and study it and become experts in it. Therefore, we will become experts in the work of Allah and the word of Allah and then we can proudly call ourselves as true Muslims. Now as my friend has said and I'm happy he said that only five countries speak English and then there is a my favorite phrase Angreza chale gaye, Angrezi chhod gaye. So, we have not yet got out of the slavery mentality of learning good English. I am a victim of that, as you can see. Um, and I've had the opportunity to study in one of the best schools of the world, that is the Hyderabad Public School, Begumpet. And... Uh, In that school, it was mandatory for children to speak English. 
and all the teachers except the language teachers spoke to the children in English whether they understood or not sooner or later they began to understand because how do you learn your mother tongue your mother speaks to you first you don't understand and slowly you begin to understand that's how you should learn a language so we had the teachers who were speaking to us in English and we were speaking to each other in English and when we came to the high school we had uh, from the British Council and from the Peace Corps volunteers uh, Englishmen, Scotsmen, Americans who taught us English so uh, 10th, 11th and 12th I was taught by native English speakers and uh, those teachers did not know any language other than English so they could not in any way speak in any other language than English and more important than that was the extracurricular and the co-curricular activities in English that we had the debating competitions, the elocution, the dramatics club these are the things that taught us how to speak and how to be good in spoken English because when you are in a debate you need to change your tone and tenor when you are attacking your opponent you have to be aggressive you have to try to pull that person down and when you are in a drama if you are in a love scene the way you speak is different if you are in a fight the way you speak is different and if you have to be a stage whisper you have to be different so all these nuances we have learned through the co-curricular and the extracurricular activities so I hope these are a part of your curriculum and I hope that sooner or later or sooner rather than later you will have an opportunity to learn three languages equally well your mother tongue the language in which the Allah's message is there and an international language which is English and the Arabic I was glancing through this book and I must congratulate Muhammad Akbar Ali Khan Saab for this uh, great effort that he has put in I know how hard it is to write a book you have to burn the midnight oil you have to really slog and you have to come out then you know it is uh, proofreading and finally it comes out into print so it's a difficult thing to write a book and he has taken up that challenge and he has done it successfully I invite you to join your hands for him uh, I'm happy that today I have met this galaxy of people uh, from different walks of life who are intellectuals in their own life in, in their own light and I hope that we shall have further interactions and as far as uh, Khurram sir is considered uh, I think uh, our relationship transcends two generations uh, my father and his father were very close friends and when he started his dawn school in Mallepalli the very first students in that school were my brothers my father pulled them out of St. George's Grammar School and put them in dawn school that is the amount of confidence he had in his father and that was rewarded today my brothers are doing very well they have had a very good foundation of education and at that time Kuram Baba also was learning and today also uh, he is a good educational administrator running various schools and doing good work so I thank you all for this opportunity thank you very much